this is World Civilization. My name is Dr. Long. This video is part five of the series on world religions. And this video is on Buddhism. Now as a religion, Buddhism comes out of Hinduism. Buddhism shares common assumptions with Hinduism, such as samsara, reincarnation, and karma. Both Buddhism and Hinduism are Eastern religions. The founder of Buddhism was Siddhartha Gautama, who lived approximately from 566 to 486 BCE. He was later called the Buddha, which means the enlightened one. Now Buddhist scriptures, which were written over 500 years after his death, gives us an account of his life. Now, Siddhartha Gautama was born into a noble Hindu family in northern India around the 4th century BCE. According to traditional Buddhist stories, miracles were associated with his birth as well as several aspects of his life. As a young man, Siddhartha was on a quest for enlightenment and he had several teachers in his quest. After successfully facing many temptations, Siddhartha was said to have obtained, ob, obtained spiritual enlightenment after a night of deep meditation under a Bodhi tree. The term Buddha, which again means enlightened one, was then applied to him and is the name that is generally associated with, associated with him thereafter. Buddha then went around teaching, preaching, and making followers in northern India, uh, many of whom would later become Buddhist, the first Buddhist monks. According to Buddhist tradition, the Buddha lived to the age of 80, and he died after passing through several meditative trances, and he died serene and self-composed. Reportedly, the Buddha's final words before dying and reaching nirvana were, quote, decay is inherent in all things. Be sure to strive with clarity of mind for nirvana. And this goes to a key Buddhist teaching uh, that life is always changing and that, that change is a, is, a, is a constant feature of life. Now Buddhism spread after the Buddha's lifetime, uh, particularly in the fourth and third centuries BCE. Unlike Hinduism, but similarly, similar to Christianity, Buddhism was a missionary beginning from the very beginning, and it spread primarily on trade routes to the much, of, much of the rest of Asia. Now, as a religious teacher, the Buddha accepted many aspects of Hinduism, and he came out of Hinduism. And these include the importance of Dharma, doing one's duty, the idea of karma, that bad deeds will hurt one's rebirth in the next life, and the whole idea of samsara and reincarnation. In fact, Buddhism teaches that through the cycles of reincarnation, we have all at one point been each other's mothers and fathers uh, and even each other's sons and daughters. However, Buddha also rejected some key aspects of Hinduism, most notably the entire caste system, which he saw as wrong and erroneous, along with the pr Hindu priesthood and many Hindu rituals. Now this marked a profound break with Hinduism, and as a result, Buddhism developed into its own religion without a formal priesthood, and especially without a caste system. Now in a certain sense, Buddha began as a reformer who ended up the founder of a new religion. Now Buddhism as a religion approaches the question of evil and suffering with its own unique answer. And for Buddhism, the cause of evil, the cause of suffering, is ultimately desire and craving. Desire leads to wrong action, and wrong action leads to suffering. So the ultimate goal in Buddhism is to break desire, to break craving, and break the entire cycle of death and rebirth that goes on endlessly. Buddhists believe in six cycles of rebirth after one dies, uh, one of which is, is, a, is a version of hell, actually. And they believe that you, can, you are reborn, but that at some point you can break the cycle of birth and, re -death, and birth, death and rebirth. The ultimate goal is to reach enlightenment, a perfect state of peace and harmony uh, that is considered nirvana. Now the term nirvana means extinction. It is considered a spiritual state, free of desire and especially free of suffering. So the goal of Buddhism is not to reach unity with ultimate reality, with Brahman, which, it, which you see in Hinduism. 
nor is it the goal to obtain forgiveness of sins uh, with God, because Buddhism doesn't really focus on God or even necessarily believe in God. Rather, the goal is to reach the state of nirvana. And nirvana is an, an impersonal state. It is neither God nor ultimate reality. It is simply a state free of suffering and desire. Buddhists are also discouraged from speculating too much about nirvana. But certainly the idea is that it, 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 is, it is free of suffering. Buddhism does have its own gods and goddesses, although they are seen as limited figures in the grand scheme. Uh, and Buddhism is, is sometimes even described, uh, depending on who, who you talk to, as a religion without God entirely. Now, Buddhism recognizes four truths about the world that it calls the Four Noble Truths. And these Four Noble Truths are first, the truth of suffering, that life is full of suffering. Second, the truth of arising, or that the origin of suffering is desire. So realizing that, that suffering comes out of desire. Third, the truth of cessation, that the cessation of suffering comes after a cessation of desire. And fourth, the, tr the truth of the path, that the, that the, the, the path that you should follow to nirvana is to, to cease your desire and to end suffering entirely. Now to end suffering in the cycle of reincarnation and ultimately arrive at nirvana, Buddhists are supposed to follow what is called the Noble Eightfold Path. The Noble Eightfold Path. And these eight practices include one, right understanding, Two, right intention. Three, right speech. Four, right conduct. Five, right occupation. Six, right endeavor. Seven, right contemplation. And eighth, and finally, right concentration. So the Noble Eightfold Paths are positive actions and more, a moral code that one can use to earn merit and move forward towards this idea of nirvana. Your own personal actions are seen as ta uh, taking you towards nirvana. Now meditation is also very important in Buddhism, both for monks and nuns, those who decide to devote their entire life to a, a spiritual life, and for lay people, lay people, both men and women, those who live kind of an ordinary life as Buddhists. Now remember, the Buddha himself was said to have achieved enlightenment through meditation. Meditation is a way to empty oneself and it is seen as key to reaching nirvana. All schools of Buddhism, no matter what their different perspectives, emphasize meditation and have different meditation techniques. On the other hand, to avoid gaining karma from bad deeds, Buddhists are supposed to av avoid immoral actions. And again, Buddhism is a heavily moralistic religion. Buddhism includes what are called the five precepts, or five immoral actions, that one is to especially avoid. And these five precepts, or five really heavily immoral actions, are considered first, killing, second, stealing, third, sexual immorality, fourth, lying, and fifth, taking intoxicants. Now, like Christianity, monasticism, both for men and women, is important in Buddhism. While Buddhist monks and nuns engage in fasting and lean towards vegetarianism in their diet, as it is associated with nonviolence, Buddhism as a whole is not strictly vegetarian, uh, particularly in comparison to Hinduism. There are two main branches or schools of Buddhism that developed over time, and scholars are not entirely unsure how they arose to be separate branches or schools of Hinduism and what had, has been called the Great Schism in Buddhism. It is thought that, this, that the divisions in Buddhism perhaps came from disputes among monks. The oldest and most traditional school or branch of Buddhism is Theravada Buddhism. Theravada Buddhism. And the, the word Theravada means the teaching of the elders. So again, it's the oldest and more traditional school of Buddhism. As a school of Buddhism, the central figure in Theravada Buddhism is the monk. And there's a big stress on, on monasticism, both for men and women. There's a great deal of emphasis on the monastic life. Obtaining nirvana is seen as one's own personal responsibility. And to do so, 
sooner or later is believed that you need to take up the monastic lifestyle, either in this life or in, in one of your next lives. On a related note, Theravada Buddhism sees the Buddha as a great man and enlightened, but it mainly sees him as a good example to follow. He is seen still as a man, not as a savior. Theravada Buddhism spread through merchants and missionaries beginning in the 3rd century BCE. It spread from northern India to Sri Lanka to Burma and to Thailand. The second and the, younger, the youngest branch or school of Buddhism is Mahayana Buddhism. And it is actually the largest school or branch of Buddhism today. The name Mahayana means the great vehicle. Now it is a more personal form of Buddhism. It sees the Buddha as a more semi-divine figure. Buddha is seen as a compassionate being who actually has postponed his entrance into nirvana to help others obtain their own spiritual path that will lead to nirvana. And the idea is that the Buddha has stayed behind before finally reaching nirvana so he can help others. He is so compassionate uh, he's not actually entered nirvana yet. So Mahayana Buddhism sees the Buddha as a kind of savior figure. And there are some parallels that scholars have noted between Mahayana Buddhism and Christianity, how Buddhists, Mahayana Buddhists see Buddha and how, how uh, Christians see Jesus. Although it is highly unlikely that these two religious groups had anything, uh, any contact or shared ideas as they developed entirely separately. Now Mahayana Buddhists offer prayers to the Buddha and they seek his assistance. Statues of the Buddha and temples to him that are dedicated to him are part of their devotion. They also believe in other holy men and women who have reached enlightenment like the Buddha. And these other holy people who likewise can help you spiritually in, towards on your path to nirvana are called bodhisattvas. And so in addition to the Buddha, there are a host of bodhisattvas in Mahayana Buddhism. And again, these are holy men and women who one can pray to, one, uh, one can seek their, their divine assistance from uh, to help you in your path to nirvana. Again, this is another aspect that makes Mahayana Buddhism very personal and very intimate. And Mahayana Buddhism believes there are many different bodhisattvas. Now, Mahayana Buddhism spread from India along the trade routes in Central Asia, including the Silk Road. It spread to China uh, and, and from there to the rest of East Asia, primarily Korea and Japan. One branch of Mahayana Buddhism is what is called the Vajrayana school, and this is a term that means thunderbolt. The Vajrayana school is common in Mongolia and especially in Tibet. Now in general, as a religion, Buddhism does not have a central authority figure. There is no pope of Buddhism. However, in Tibet, Tibetan Buddhism does include an important monk and leader known as the Dalai Lama. And he is closely associated both with Tibetan Buddhism and with the Tibetan nation. Well, let's make a, a few concluding points about Buddhism. As an Eastern religion, Buddhism shares many common assumptions with Hinduism, such as the notion of karma, samsara, and reincarnation. Nonetheless, it has many big differences with Hinduism that make it a separate religion altogether. Most notably, it denies the, the uh, Hindu caste system, it denies the Hindu priesthood, and Buddhism subscribes to the notion of nirvana instead of reaching unity with Brahman that you see in Hinduism. Now as with other world religions, part of the growth and spread of Buddhism including the development of different branches or schools of its religion, such as Theravada and Mahayana Buddhism. Just as Christianity and Islam grew, after, grew and, and, and developed different branches and splits after becoming distinctive religions, so too did Buddhism. Today, Buddhism has over 500 million adherents in the world, mostly in Asia, but it has come to have some popularity in the West as well. And I'll stop with this observation. Thanks for watching.